Hello everybody. Welcome back to my 1943 Gravely Model L restoration project. Yesterday I took the top end off the engine. I'm going to start working on that today. I've got a different cylinder head that I'm going to use on this project because you can see there's a broken fin right there. Uh, no big deal, but I am going to utilize this head today uh, when I go to sandblast. I'll explain that here in a little bit. So I had already mic'd out the cylinder bore and the bore looks fine. It's all within spec. It's not tapered. It's not out of. Uh, it's not out of round. I don't see any, you know, big scratches or anything in it. So what I'm going to do is hone that. I'll put new rings on the piston, and that should be in good shape. Uh, right now, what I want to do is I want to remove the intake valve, and the exhaust valve, strip all of this stuff off of there, and get this masked up and ready for sandblasting. Okay, let's get the valves, the valve springs out of here. So I can inspect the valves and the seats, make sure everything's good. Hopefully all I have to do is lap these valves back in. Take the intake off first. Just compress this as far as we can. There's a little keeper right here that has to come out. Keeper doesn't want to come out. There we go. Just being stubborn. I've got two bags here marked intake and exhaust parts are all going to go in the appropriate box I, or bag. I don't know that it matters, but I'm just kind of particular that way. Okay, let's see if I can get it. Oh good, everything came off. Keeper, valve spring, this is the top part of the cover. I'll clean all this up and I'll repaint the covers and stuff eventually. Now usually these have little burrs on them that you have to file off. You see it's hitting, trying to come out. You don't want to just yank that right on out of there. That's going to create problems. Get a small file. Just go around the edges. Get those burrs off. It's not going to affect the keeper holding on to it, but we'll let you pull the valve out just like that. That valve looks really good. Check the valve guide. Very little movement. Excellent. Yeah, you can see this has got a nice, nice edge to it. Valve seat looks fantastic. Okay, intake side is good. Need some cleaning. All right, let's flip it over. Put the valve, put everything in here. Let's do the exhaust side now. This one is going to come out a lot easier. That one just fell right out. Okay. This one's coming out much easier. Everything just sliding off on that one. Put this all in my bag marked exhaust. I know, oh, no burr on there to take off. Good deal.
That edge looks really good too. Very little movement. Those guides are in great shape. Valve seat looks good. All I'm going to have to do is uh, just lap, clean these up and lap them back in. That's pretty good. All right, excellent. Okay, I'm set up outside my driveway. Got the cylinder all masked off and ready to go. Set of gloves, dust mask, eye protection, and my very cheap little Amazon uh, sandblaster. 35 bucks surprisingly enough it works pretty well so let's get to work and get this thing cleaned up done with the sand blasting and back downstairs in the basement. I took the head off, removed the masking, and inspected a few things. I wanted to point out some problems that I noticed. I have three cracks. One right here, one here, and one here. Three bolt holes in a row right on the thin portions. Uh, unfortunately, that's not very uncommon for these cylinders. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is I've had the head on and off this thing and retorqued it at least three times and haven't had any problems. So I'm optimistic that when I put this thing back together, I can torque it back down and not have any problems again. Uh, this isn't going to be a daily user, so I'm not really concerned about you know long term what's going to happen. Uh, I, th I think we're going to be fine. So next thing I need to do now is I'm going to paint the cylinder with some good high temp engine paint. And when I'm all done with the painting, I'll clean the deck off, clean these passages out, lap the valves back in, hone the cylinder, uh, put new rings in the pistons, and we'll, uh, we'll reassemble the engine. You can see, take it all the masking off the cylinder, clean the deck, clean the ports, cleaned out the valve guides, uh, cleaned all the gasket mating surfaces, made sure there's no residual sand from the sand blasting. Now it's time to lap the valves in. This is a very simple process. We're going to start with the exhaust side, but all you need is one of these little suction cup tools and some valve grinding compound. What you want to do is put a thin bead of grinding compound around the mating surface of the valve. You're going to slide it in, put your suction cup tool on, you're going to work this back and forth, pick it up, drop it back down, work it back and forth again. What you're doing is you're just very finely grinding the valve in the seat to make a perfect, perfect seal. So let's go ahead and do that exhaust valve now. Now will see what this looks like. Continue to work the valves lightly back and forth until the lapping compound doesn't feel like it's cutting as aggressively anymore. Then remove the valve, clean the surfaces, inspect them, and repeat the process as many times as necessary. While done lapping the valves, you can tell the, the surfaces on the, on the valves and the seats are all in really good shape. They're nice and clean and consistent. Should have a really good seal on both the intake and the exhaust side now. I decided to clean the piston today, and I noticed something that hadn't caught my attention when I first took it out of the engine. Uh, this piston has three identical compression rings and one thin oil ring. That's quite different than this style of piston that I'm used to working with. This is the style of piston that you can still buy new today when you buy ring kits this is the piston they go to you have two slightly different compression rings and a three-piece oil ring so i was a little confused by this style i'd never seen it before i have never tore into a, an l engine this old so i went online and i looked at the old manuals and the 1938 and 1948 manuals 
show this four ring configuration. The 1950 service manual shows this three ring configuration. So sometime between 1948 and 1950, gravely switched from four rings to three rings. The bad news is I can't get rings for this piston anymore. So there's nothing I can do with that. The good news is I just happen to have a donor engine that has a good standard piston in it that I can use for this project. So the piston on the right is the one I'm going to put my new rings in. It's the one I'm going to install in that engine when I put it back together. The okay, next thing we're going to do is hone the cylinder. So for this we need our small cylinder hone on a cordless drill and some form of lubricant, WD-40 works good. Spray the cylinder down thoroughly. I usually spray a little bit on the stones too. Now you want to spin this while you move it up and down pretty quickly. You want to try to get 45 degree crosshatch pattern in there. doing this if you look down you can see kind of the, how it's swiping the oil you can see the kind of the angle that your your pattern is is honing I'd say that looks pretty good Our cylinder's all honed. We'll just finish cleaning this up. And it's time to work on the piston. Next thing we need to do is check our ring gaps. Now you notice when you buy a, a ring kit, you have two compression rings. One's got chrome on it and one's plain. The chrome is your top compression ring. The plain one is your middle ring. And it's also got a little bevel on it too. And then the next three pieces are for your oil ring. Now, if you go on gtgravelyparts.com, they've got this really nice installation instruction guide. Um, it's got you know, your ring gap specifications, how to check them, uh, tells you which rings are which, how to set those ends, gives you an idea how to install them. It's really good stuff. So the first one we're going to check is our top compression ring. So we're going to very carefully slide that into the cylinder, push it down a bit. This is supposed to be between 12 and 20 thousandths. As long as it's in that range, it's fine. So we take our 12 thousandths, that slides in there okay. Let's grab 21 thousandths. And that is really tight. So we're going to call that good. It's on the high side, but it's good. Repeat this process for your remaining piston rings. If a gap is too small, you'll have to file the edge of the ring to open the gap slightly. If a gap is too large and your cylinder's within spec, you'll have to buy the next larger size ring and file the ends to get the gap to the appropriate size. Okay, we've got our piston rings installed and the end gap set according to this chart. Now usually what I do is I put the piston on the connecting rod and then slide the cylinder over the top of it. But I see online where a lot of people install the piston first and then slide that assembly over the connecting rod and push the wrist pin in. So I'm going to give that a try. Now this notch goes to the back of the cylinder. This is my intake, this is my exhaust, this is the back of the cylinder. So the notch, how this is set on the bench, needs to go towards me. Tight 
top rings in. Where's that gap at? There's the gap. Suck like compression rings in. Now I better get the oil ring in. That's hung up. Let's try giving it a little light persuasion. Get the cylinder put on here. Got to take the old gasket off. I just left it on there to kind of protect things while I was painting. Make sure I don't drop any pieces of it down into the engine. Let's see how this mating surface looks. go that looks good put our new gasket on Make sure we don't rip anything oh boy now here's our cylinder set this on something. Our cylinder with the piston, but we got to take care of the valve covers and the little gaskets that go in there first. It's just two little cork rings. Uh, word of advice, this has happened to me before, Make absolutely certain the old gasket is off because they can blend in and look like the cast iron. I did that on my 55, couldn't figure out why it was leaking from the exhaust side, pulled the cylinder off and that was that explained it. If these things don't, the new gaskets don't slide all the way down around this ring, you, you've got another gasket on there. So put your two gaskets on. We're going to set our two lower valve covers into place. Uh, let's oil up the, the wrist pin bushing here. Somewhere, there's my wrist pin. Uh, let's oil this up, set it aside for a second. Actually, I'm gonna oil it up. You can't see this because it's over here. I'm gonna install it part way into the piston. You're gonna, I'm going to have to apologize. This takes a while because this is the first time I've ever tried to install one this way. Everybody I see has a little bit of a mallet or a hammer they use. So I'll get a couple of those ready. Keep my wrist pin retainers handy. I need a pair of pliers for that too. A pair of needle nose. Okay. So... Intake, exhaust, 
back of the engine. Let's see how difficult this is. Oh, pfft. that was easier than I expected. Okay, let's just carefully set this here. That was pretty easy. Let's put these on. Uh, before I do that, let's take these off again real quick so I don't mess them up. Let's cover this, this hole here in case one of these clips slides off my pliers. I don't end up dropping it down into the engine. in. Install the back one. Okay, that's in too. All right. A lot easier than I anticipated so far. Double check, exhaust, intake. Okay, I've got this all set up correctly. Get the bag out of the way. Our valve cover's in place. I lost the gasket on this side just now. That wouldn't have been good. This thing would have leaked like crazy. all the way down. Valve covers slide up and down just fine. Gaskets are in place. After tightening the 916 nuts in a crisscross pattern to secure the cylinder head to the crankcase, the next thing we'll do is set our valve lash. So in these old style with the spring-loaded valve cover, you just lift them up and you see there's a kind of a lock nut here and the, the valve tap it there. So we're going to take our 15, slide it between the valve. That is really loose. So to loosen this up so I can adjust it, put your half inch up on the tap it. Put your 916s here. And loosen up. There we go. That's a little snug. Loosen up the bottom. There we go. Now this has to come way up. So we're gonna screw this up about a half a turn or so. Check it again. Okay, we're too tight, so we went a little too far. Bring it back down a hair. Might have been a little too loose. I think we're right there. So now you hold this one so it doesn't move. And you tighten your little lock on the bottom down.
They make these thin wrenches called tappet wrenches that are a lot easier for this type of thing. Using a full size wrench, you can barely get it in there. Tighten it up. I'm gonna double check, make sure it's still good. I didn't move anything. We're good. All right, that is all there is to setting the, the valve clearance on a Model L engine. I lightly oiled the cylinder bore before installing the head, and I chose not to torque the head down at this time on account of those three hairline cracks in the bolt holes in the cylinder, and the fact that it's gonna be a while before this tractor is completely reassembled and ready to be ran, and on the off chance that I have to remove the head between now and then, I don't wanna to have to torque this any more than necessary. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next episode.